Jag har en lack. Alla har en lack. Jag har en lack. Jag har en lack. Jag har en lack. Jag har Jag har en lack. 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 Jag har Ibaslian Kurios, Otios, Opanda Greta. Baslios Baslion, Kai Kurios, Kurio. Yehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal. Yehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebur. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos. Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion. Kurion Mahagion Panta Greta. Gadol Gadol Gibbola Yehova Ishmal Khan Yehova Shamma Yel Nakum Yehova El Nakum Yapa Netzak Israel La Sheker Gava Gava Triembos Yehova Jesus Christos Pantecreta Gadol Gadol Gibbola Morarosh Nasa Elohim Elohim Ilaylai Shalot, Yehova Malak, Yehova Malak, Olam Olam Ad, Yehova Eleheno, Yehova Ekad, Gadol Gadol, Gibb. Zoan Logan, Ogar, Tautios, Dulas, Desmias, Despotes, Dikae Sune, Enisus Christos, Kurion, 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 Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa Panta Kreta Gadol Gadol Kebura Yehova Ihe Elohim Yehova Ihe Elohim Ilaylai Shalot Yehova Malak Yehova Malak Jesus Christos Olam Olam Ad Yehova Eleheno Yehova Ekad Gadol Gadol Kebura Yehova Yehova El Yehova Yehova Rakum Shan Yehova El Arakabi Rab Kesad Emet Yehova Mine Mine Tikel Ufarsin Derek Emono Bakar Mishfat Shaba Damega Logai of Yahweh El Elion Elohim is always alive and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of blood God might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in the nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Not to fear or worry about the wiles of the devil, but rather knowing our true Lord of a God, the Lord God who reigneth forever and forever, coming to serve that Lord God in spirit and in truth. The attributes mentioned of him, the rock, the refuge, the strength, salvation. Such a great Lord of a God we come to serve. And what is our enemy to fear? If Lord God be with us, then who can be against us?
the fiery trials or darts of Satan which it plans against you looking upon the lustful patterns of your roles in nature as the word could say tell the man I will tell the rule so show me the man I will show him his weakness in the flesh and he will be a slave to me so that we can pervert the gospel of the true Lord of God in Galatians 1 7 when you read the word who has bewitched you so soon you have left the true word of the Lord God and the word for pervert over there in the Hebrew teaches what we are looking in the present Christendom without disciples, without grammatures grown up, without every believer making up the things that which have been called for them to be serving Christ as grown up grammatures conforming to the image of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Such a great Lord of God we come to serve in spirit and in truth. Why you want to get perverted without becoming as joining disciples to Christ without growing up into grammatures in the Lord. Man's heart is desperately wicked and sick, who can know it? But it is Lord God the Father who searcheth your heart and brains so that we can serve him in spirit and in truth. Much of the people who suffer with this word called a psychosomatic illness, it's purely nothing but your soul, which is not able to bear the pressures and simply puts upon your body the pressures which you are taking without knowing how great and powerful is my Yehovah Elohim. When David describes in Psalms chapter 18 verse 1 number 2, the ten attributes of my Lord and when Moses describes the attributes of my Lord in Psalms 91 2, then what is that we shall fear when we have such a great Lord of a God to serve though Satan as an adversary, traveling up and down on the entire parts of the earth to find out what the man's heart is all about, or man's soul is all about, what his thinking going on in all about. And why can't you renovate and think the thinking of my Christ? Though the pressure like Exodus 1, putting you in the sea word, when the male child has been born and the female child has to be kept alive, if that water word or sea word, if it would have been a great pleasure for salvation, a great pleasure for doctrine, a great pleasure for the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then how much more today every man who has been born in the image of God should be great preachers and representing the glory of the Lord and filling the earth with his marvelous grace. The grace of learning and knowing the word of Lord God in each and every nick and corner of the place wherever you go. In that grace to teach the word of Lord God, if every man would have been there, you would have really known only one thing, the Lord God whom he serveth is a great Lord of a God. And that great Lord God, what we have for us in this church age, is a Lord of glory. Besides, Satan goes up and down towards the entire earth to search and to find out faults and errors in you. It can do nothing when you know the power of the word of Lord God to be taught. When you know what and how our Lord of God is all about. So dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. And let's come back and continue with what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us. On today's date of eternity past, to the praise of Lord God's glory, the pale wonders of his marvelous will. So dear brethren, confess your sins through rebound. The Lord God whom you are serving with is a Lord God of truth. He demands nothing but truth. And while you are coming to serve him in truth, make sure you are in the fellowship of him and know the word of the Lord God. So dear brethren, we shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale of the Lord's mind. 
infinitely divine holy father once again coming into the marvelous grace of lord to lord the truth what a marvelous characters of your descriptions have been revealed by Mo by moses as well as david the lord man doesn't know them hasn't learnt about them and yet man has been to such a real to destroy his own life without knowing the power given for him at least in apostle paul epistle of second timothy he teaches to us in second timothy 1:7 that the spirit which i have given for us is the power of dunamis and so for his most mind and the trials and the troubles of this earth are nothing before that great power of flood cut the holy spirit and the word of flood cut which wanes and it allowed without knowing your power without knowing your strength without knowing your word without knowing your wisdom without knowing your knowledge people are still seeking stupid things help us all to understand your mind and to learn your word and to make these people to realize what a great thing it is to serve you in spirit and in truth all the days of our life on this earth so father as we come once again into the marvelous grace to learn your mind we pray that lord god the holy ghost would enlighten and challenge and bless us by the message which are prepared and kept for us on today's day of eternity past to the praise of your glory your matchless marvelous infinite divine glorious praise in christ we ask so lord in second chronicles chapter 1 the prayer of Solomon when Lord God appears unto him in the night the word what we look in verse number 7 for night is called as laleel and the point over here what we look it says not just once but twice double discipleship program the word night represents in the pictographical representation for us two lamad sticks and lamad is manthano plus didasco discipleship program to christ and here lord god the father teaches to us in very very simple terms of his mind the days are evil you're staying in the midst of the darkness in these days be double discipleship program to me that's the reason why i appears in the night it's not day dream it's a night dream lord god appears unto solomon and says unto him ask what shall i give you if the same thing is happening to you you may ask <laughs> wealth riches long life xyz here yeah, solomon asks wisdom and knowledge in Isaiah chapter 32 when you can look upon that verse number 18 it is if you can find rather than asking wisdom and knowledge the first thing which any believer in my Christ should ask faithfulness of character that's what we find over here in Isaiah 33 if it has been there he says the word over here to emphasize the point that the translation over here is not so accurate what you can find in this english but if you can read that in the hebrew he says in verse number 6 of Isaiah 33 it is it is not in 18 it is verse number 6 he said wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of the times no faithfulness is what it has been de- demanded first the word army or the word what we can look over here emphasizing the point called as amat if you don't have faithfulness then you don't find wisdom and knowledge to be your great vigor and valor or refuge for salvation and that comes only in one way when you know the wisdom and knowledge is the fear of lord god and that shall be your treasure 
Yes, Solomon is asking in chapter 1 of 2nd Chronicles, the great prayer, if you can understand wisdom and knowledge. The first thing what you need to ask, Psalms 139 prayer, search me, O Lord, diligently know me, know my heart and know my anxious thoughts. Because there are times in this all sin nature of this flesh, in spite of using rebound and getting back to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, there are times when we do sin either by thought, word or deed. We haven't been found to be faithful because that's what the lust of the flesh will do all the time. Therefore, Christ the Lord of God said, even if you can look upon a woman with her, though you haven't had with her your physical thing, he says, though you look upon her in a sense of adultery or committing adultery with her, you have sinned. That's what the flesh is. When we are not faithful, we do sin. The first character what Solomon asks is wisdom and knowledge. The first character what Isaiah 33, 6 says in the original Hebrew, stability of your times called to be the faithfulness in your every season, all seasons from Genesis 1, 1, beginning of Genesis 1, 26, Adam being made for us in the human realm we are talking about. But this lesson applies even to this angels who have rebelled against my Lord God, followed by this adversary Satan, which makes its entry in Job chapter 1 as well, if we can look in verse number 7. Even for this enemy Job, the lesson would have been this great faithfulness, faithfulness in all seasons. When this enemy is coming, in verse 6, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came. Satan also comes. The reason Satan over here is called to be adversary, what does it do? It introduces to you psychosomatic illness. Therefore Christ our Lord our God says, Cast all your burdens upon me, for I careth for you. But Satan comes to put pressure, pressure upon your soul, your soul or mind, whatever you can make up over there. The soul cannot go to take maximum pressure it puts upon the body. That's what we call psychosomatic illness. Satan is nothing but psychosomatic illness because you don't find enough courage to cast all your burdens upon the Lord God. You cannot find Matthew 11, 30 and 31 to be fulfilled by casting all your burdens upon the Lord God and coming and taking the yoke and the burden of the Lord God which is light and easy to be carried. So Satan says, don't believe the word of Lord God and I am going to destroy your soul by making you all to suffer with psychosomatic illness and not making up your vigor and valor to be upright in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to serve him, but rather I will absolutely destroy your vigor and valor. That's what Satan does. Now Satan also is coming over here, that's what he says. And the Lord said unto Satan, When you came thou, then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro, this word is very, very important. The word going to and fro is called to be shut, or we can call shunting. The Hebrew word is shut, but you can call as shunting. You know, you have a railway engine to go front and back, that's called to be shunting. The same thing over here when you can understand shot is nothing but Satan is looking your thought process in your soul. That's the word going to and fro for the word called to be short. And then what does it do? It says in the earth having pressure upon your head and walking up and down. That is what it is able to not find those men who shall be disciple oriented believers to grow up into grammatias. That's what Satan does all the time. Walking up and down. The word over here walking up and down is called as halak. It knows that you people can't be joining as disciples. You people can't be growing up into grammatias in the presence of the Lord God. That's what Satan does. Walking up and down. The same thing if you can come back over in Galatians chapter 1 in verse number 7. 
Now Paul is asking, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into his grace of Christ unto another gospel. The word taumazo, marvel happens when you are not able to overcome the pressures of this life and come and attend daily Bible class by taking up your cross and obeying Luke 9, 23. If you don't do that, if you're not happening, that, then it's a great amazement called to be as a marvel because you are not able to endure or lift up the pressures of this life and stand faithful to Christ. That's what he's looking. Today also we can find the same standards in our churches, in our pulpits, where today, though the word of Lord God has been so graciously given for you all, and Lord God the Father sends in his time, the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers who have been trained very well in the Lord's mind, and they come and tell every day, take up your cross and follow my Lord. It's a marvel for us to look how you people have been not able to overcome the pressures upon your vigor and value being put by Satan. That meant to say what? You're looking upon your smartphone, you can find how much of a sheer rut of information you will be looking into it. Much of phonography, much of the stupid news of the present world happening. Satan knows very well, put him in such and such pressures. He will not die, but from it he will be very, very faithful abiding there. Put him such pressure, that's enough to him. He cannot do anything more than that. Just put him that pressure there, it's enough. He will be abiding faithfully over there in that pressure. You know, dear brother, on the point what I want to tell. Apostle Paul is taumazo. He's marveled, he's shocked. You know why? Because you are not able to overcome your pressures to learn Bible doctrine. That's what Satan loves to put. The word Satan adversary itself meant to say, putting pressure upon your soul so that you cannot overcome the lustful patterns of your soul and take up your cross every day and subject to Christ and learn the word of Lord God. That's the name of Satan. And what it does, it goes on for shunting work, the Hebrew word shot. Every time it looks upon your thought process to understand what is there in your soul. And what will be there in your soul if it is not doctrine? You will have the viewpoint of this human. And that human viewpoint will never make you all to become the Lord's mind. Because the thinking of Christ is far greater than the thinking of yours. His thoughts are not like your thoughts. His ways are not like your ways. As the heaven is far than the earth, so are his thoughts than yours. And therefore Satan knows very well what is there in your soul. It comes to cross-check. That's the meaning, going up and down. And what does he do now over all the earth? Halak. It's not able to find the people who can be disciple-oriented. It's not able to find the people who are joining as disciples. And growing up into grammar, he was called to be Matthew 13, 52. That's what Satan does all the time. Going up and down to look that you people are not worthy for discipleship program. You people haven't grown up for discipleship program. That's what Satan does every time you look. No discipleship program. So, dear brother, here also happens the same thing. He's marveled to see how you people are not able to overcome the pressures. And comes to verse number 7, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert. And the word pervert over here has been called to be metastrapho. And the meaning of the word metastrapho in the Hebrew, it is called to be hapak. And the meaning of the word hapak is nothing but your brethren. Your mouth is not at all talking Matthew 13, 52 concept, Matthew 23, 34 concept, joining as disciples to grow up into grammar tears. Your mouth is not preaching that. In Matthew 13, 52, he said that. In Matthew 23, 34, he said he's going to send his prophets, his wise men, his scribes. 
Therefore, when they grow up into scribes, they will go and make disciples of all the nations. Metastrapho, hapak. The perverting gospel is what's been taught in our pulpits today. That's what Satan does. Going up and down, it looks. Your body is not fit for discipleship program. Your body is not fit for grammatics program. That's what Satan looks very well. Perverting up and down. Looking up and down. Considering up and down. And Satan knows very well why you people will be in such a manner because you are not asking faithfulness as number one priority as Solomon asks over here for wisdom and knowledge and Lord God the Father grants him wisdom and knowledge besides that he grants him in his days there will be no one like that rich person or wealth or having that all categories of the things of peace and prosperity like stone he said gold was in his time so all these things happened but would have prayed Lord give me faithfulness. Let me be faithful, O Lord, to learn your word. Let me be faithful, O Lord, to understand your wisdom. Let me be faithful, O Lord, in any season to be absolutely learning up and acquainting up with your knowledge. Your kakma and the earth file, O Lord, let it be all the time for me. That's what you should have asked. Because when we look now in the completed can of scripture... The prayer of yours should be, Lord, enlighten my spiritual eyes so that, Lord, I could every day be faithful for you. In any season, O Lord, right from the beginning of the man what you have made, the way how Satan rebuilt against you. Till iniquity was found in it, we read that in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse number 15. The avant nature of Satan, distorted thinking from discipleship program, begins from there. Your avant nature iniquity nature so it happens from there from there you find no discipleship program today also in our pulpits no discipleship program that's what satan does but in any season what man has to be he has to be faithful his blood has to suck nothing but the truth if not say to lord god the father lord destroy my blood if my blood is not sucking the truth, O oh Lord, what is the purpose of my life? Everything will be vanity. My blood should suck the truth. Help me to suck the truth. Help me to be faithful in sucking the truth every day in your presence. No matter whatever it is, though Satan could come and file a report against me, when it is finding my thought process in my soul, it should be nothing but Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, mine, reflecting. Therefore, Lord, send those pastor teachers who could train us up with wisdom and knowledge so that we could grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine every day. When Solomon has been appeared unto Christ in the night, And Christ, O Lord, God, ask Solomon, what do you want? Ask me. Wisdom and knowledge. In Isaiah 33, 6, we look. It's not about that wisdom and knowledge. He says, first, stability of the times, faithfulness in any season. That will be the source of your salvation. That will be the strength of your salvation. That will be a refuge and power in your salvation. And then he would say further, wisdom and knowledge is the treasure. Why? Because that is the fear of the Lord. Before wisdom and knowledge, you don't find that in the translation of your English. The Hebrew says, faithfulness in every season, Lord. That is needed for us today. Are you faithful in taking up your cross every day and coming and learning the word of Lord God? At the end of your journey, either you will be as Matthew 25 goes on or some of the people in the book of First Timothy we can understand as even in the book of Hebrews. Good and faithful come towards right. The people who are not faithful to me, he would say, come into the lake of fire. The category is good and faithful. Solomon's life, you can look, WWW destroyed him. Woman, wealth, weaponry. The same three things are restricted in Deuteronomy chapter 17. 
when the king is ascending to the throne he shall not have such and such things but what he shall have a copy written taken from the levites a law of torah like a scribe he has to write a copy of the law but today every believer in the lord and savior jesus christ by default he is a priest he is a king have you written a copy of the law of the word of the lord god from genesis 1 1 to revelation 20 21 so that you can establish your empire your empire of truth psalms 24 4 he resides in truth the person who has such clean hands walks in your truth who shall ascend into your hill, O Lord? Again, Psalms chapter 15 teaches to us nothing but the truth. His residence is nothing but the absolute holiness and truth. And what we are looking today in our pulpits then. And yet many of the people don't understand that the things pertaining to the truth which has to be taught have been perverted. When they open up their mouth, they're far away from discipleship program. They're far away from grammatious program. Therefore, he said, I've been amazed. I marveled. How are you people not able to overcome up the pressures of your life? How are you people not able to overcome your own psychosomatic illness? The things that goes on in your brain, called to be the soul over here, it takes limited amount of information and once that has been done with that, you put the same pressure, repeated pressure. It goes on to pass it down to the parts of your body. For Sukhika's soulish, that's psycho. Soma is called again body in the Greek. So the sickness spreads when your soul is been not occupied in the great Lord of a God who is the only Lord of a God, the mind of the Lord of a God, which has been given for us in Philippians chapter 2 or Isaiah 45, emphasizing every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Christ, the Lord of glory. And there is nothing on the earth that can stand against my Lord's mind. No one, no weapon that is formed will ever prosper against the Lord's mind. It is the word of Lord God that shall reign forever and forever. And that word alone will give you that solution. So you can overcome your psychosomatic illness. That is the pressure of Satan upon you. Because pressure of Satan is all the time in your soul not to be renovated. So that now your vigor and valor has been absolutely destroyed. You can look upon some of the examples. Till the day of death, Moses' vigor and valor was not destroyed. Though he's 85, Moses, uh, Caleb says he's having the vigor and valor like 40. Elijah, the man who goes to look upon the rain coming up, he grids up his lion and he outruns the cart of the king who has been going in his horse cart. The strength which has been given for you, that's the power. Because you're not having psychosomatic illness. No influence of Satan. But Apostle Paul says, I'm marveled over here. I'm marveled how you're not able to overcome your pressures upon your strength, which has been caused by your pure negligence because you're perverting the true gospel. The true word of the Lord God says, every believer should join as disciple and grow up into grammatics. Matthew 13, 52. In John 1, 11, 12 and 13, we can understand the one who has been born according to the will of Lord God the Father. God the Father gave them the power called to be exuse your authority to be the sons of God. You know what a great privilege it is for us to be sowing Christ in spirit and in truth. If Satan can come with such sort of a things, David, long back in the book of Psalms, chapter 18, in verse number 2, prays this great prayer, the ten attributes of my Lord, what he describes over here. He said, Lord, I love you. That way to say, Lord, I am going to make up my life entirely renovated to build up as a wall of fortification based completely upon the standards of your truth. The word what we read over here is called as Rakam, to love deeply. So that now, Lord, my thoughts are matching your thoughts. I build up a wall of fortification so that in my blood flows nothing but the truth in the Lord. My thought is matching your thought. 
And now he says that what is Lord God all about for us? The ten attributes over here. The reason why I'm suffering psychosomatic illness is you don't understand the ten attributes of the Lord of God over here. He says the first one, the Lord God is my rock. You know the meaning of the word rock over here? It has been called to be Selah. The first word Selah. And the word Selah over here is nothing but your brethren. Lord God is my security. Though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. He is my stronghold. He is my cliff. He is my crag. He is my rock. You know what is the meaning of the word meant to say? In spite of any pressure in this life, Lord God the Father is my security. Therefore, I make up my viewpoint of life for discipleship program in the Lord God. So Satan cannot put any pressure upon you. Then who is putting pressure now? Your own negative evolution. You're not coming to love the Lord God with all of your spirit, with all of your mind, with all of your truth. The word seller simply says, as we read the same word in Galatians 1 4, he has already delivered you out from this present evil world. That's what we read over there in Galatians 1 4. And the word delivered we read, emphasizing the point that Lord God the Father has made us to be ex aereo. And the meaning of the word ex aereo, we read further, meant to say not sale. And the meaning of the word not sale is nothing but your brethren, in spite of any pressure upon your vigor and valor that could be, or all the forces of the world combined together so that it will stop for you not to go to discipleship program. He said, all those things can do nothing. They cannot even touch you because I've already decided you to be or predestined you to be my disciple growing up to conform to the image of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that's very very simple the word not sail what we look in Galatians 1 for in spite of all the forces joined together in this world all the forces satanic forces your emotional forces your physical forces your financial forces, any other stupid drama forces of this earth. It will be anything. All the things of this earth, all the things being put together of this earth, the word not say, all the things. God the Father delivered you to such an extent that you shall be disciple to the Lord. The same attribute what we look over here in Psalms chapter 18 in verse number 1, emphasizing the point that Lord God the Father is my rock, the word Selah. And the meaning of the word Selah is no matter how much may be pressure, you will be disciple and your viewpoint of life will be absolutely Bible doctrine. The word of the Lord God being taught in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. That's my Lord God called to be the rock. In spite of any pressure, you will be as a disciple growing up in Christ. You'll be making up your viewpoint for Bible doctrine in Christ. In spite of any pressure, let it be any pressure on this earth. The pressure what Satan can put as an adversary upon your soul. So that it can completely destroy your vigor and valor. But already Galatians 1, 4, it says, Not sail for the word ex aereo. And there any pressure that could be upon you, he says, in your vigor and valor, you can easily become disciple to the Lord. There is nothing that can hinder you. Nothing. Not sale happens to you, he said. Because already have transformed you out. You know what stupid people we are. We are so foolish. Not to know the power of the word of Lord God. Because you don't love the power of the word of Lord God to be taught every day. You give place for your reasons. You give place for your logics. You give place for many, many things. But you don't give place for Bible doctrine. That is what Lord God made man. Not man can have gods in his own thinking. 
Lord God made man, he, he gave man a manual, a manual which will be according to the terms and conditions and the demands of the word of Lord God, which goes to show and tell you what is your real power and strength or your fatigue strength where you can fail or the fatigue strength which is not at all been there when you have been there in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit performing the will of Lord God the Father. He knows very well where you fail. He knows very well where you cannot fail. He has given everything. He says if you are in the flesh, you fail. If you are in the spirit, there is nothing that can make you as a failure. He has given everything for this man to understand what he is in and out in the word of Lord God, in the will of Lord God, in the design of Lord God. But though man being made in the image of Lord God is not able to walk the terms and conditions of Lord God. And people are so happy to destroy or to be destroyed. Dear brethren, if you can simply look what the word of Lord God teaches over here for us. When you call Christ my Lord God as a rock, in spite of any pressure that could be upon you, you will be disciple. Your life will be only to the viewpoint of Bible doctrine. The second one he said, he is my fortress. The word called to be matsud in the Hebrew. You know what is that matsud? It meant to say in spite of any pressure that could be, you are going to make up your every thought as per the demands of the word of Lord God by getting every thought into captivity for Christ. That's the word called to be fortress. The first one he says rock seller. The second one he calls that Lord God Yehovah Elohim is my fortress. That meant to say what I will make up to get every thought into captivity for Christ. There is no place for any human viewpoint. There is no place for any stupid imaginations of the causes and effects or the trials which a human being has to be made on this earth in his research, in his stoicism, in his any manner of wisdom, what he can call apart from the word of Lord God. You know, that's why we have this word over here in Pro Probes chapter 15. He says in verse number 16, it has to be, I think, not 16, but he says in verse number 20, a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. And I will look in verse 21. Folly is a joy to him that is destitute of wisdom. When you don't make Yahuwah Elohim to be your rock and fortress, Selah and Matzod, then what will be your joy? He said, folly. What is folly? Far away from discipleship program. In spite of having your Aleph energy to do at the will of Lord God the Father, but rather you're using that Aleph energy to exercise the lusts of your flesh by looking and catering, not searching out First Matthew 6.33, his righteousness and his kingdom, but you're looking upon the small minute details, what we shall eat, what we shall drink, what we shall wear, what we shall lust. You know, all these things he said, pagans think, but you first go to seek my righteousness and my kingdom. In that Aleph energy, you're not able to make up your seed to be sown in the fourth quarter, but you're making up the first three quarters to be sown on the wayside, on the rocky soil and the thorny soil. Therefore, what happens dear brethren? He says, in simple words, these people love folly. <laughs> because Yehovah Elohim is not his rock. Yehovah Elohim is not his fortress. In his folly, what does he do? He is far away from discipleship program. He is very, very far away from discipleship program in the Lord. And that's what men don't understand about these things. He's very, very far away from discipleship program in the Lord. And what a sad thing it is for us. Today, the entire Christendom falling from the Pope, Roman Catholicism, they have been all the time enjoying folly. Protestant Reformation till to the 18th or 19th century, every day the word of Lord God was being taught in the pulpits of UK. You can find as an evidence by William Kelly and many, many great men who have done the past work. But nowadays what happening? The same UK has turned out for a land for many Muslims who are going to occupy the churches called to be as mosques to be served. And by 2040, 
more than 50% of the churches will become mosques. That's what one of the reports in BBC News came long back. And today we don't know what is the present situation over there. But those pulpits were teaching every day the word of Lord God. But now what has become? Folly has become fun for them. No discipleship program. Even in a country, India, if you can look. Pastor teachers are not able to make up every day to come back and teach the word of Lord God. No word by word. <coughs> line by line. Precept upon precept. Iota upon iota. Carrier upon carrier. There is no teaching of the word of Lord God in our pulpits. The same thing what we read yesterday in Jeremiah chapter 18 verse number 4 called to be good. They think Tob ministry is required that which is pleasing their soul and their body. But the word is not Tob in the Hebrew of Jeremiah 18.4. It is called to be upright. Yasher. He calls for such umbilical core of relationship with Lord God the Father dear brethren. That's it. Umbilical core of relationship. Yeah, share your thought process to be renovated as per the demands of the word of Lord God in spirit and in truth. That's the word yeah, share for us, not Tob. Don't simply make up your life for Tob and fail in your thinking there. Lord God is not a good Lord God to understand, though your soul and your body is not occupied with truth to love you. He's not such a great Lord God for you. He requires truth in your, in your inward parts. Therefore, you are worshipping Christ, O Lord of a God. Be careful that you have been in and out with the truth. Open up your mouth with truth. Breathe in truth. Walk in truth. Reign in truth. Do everything that which has to be done only in the sphere of truth. Nothing else than that. Only in the sphere of truth you do it. So dear brethren, he says over here, folly for whom the people who are making discipleship program to be far away. So this folly, what it will be, he says it is a joy for them. What a great joy called to be Simka. It's a great super abundance of joy. Why, you know, they have no pressure upon their blood to build up a wall of fortification for truth. What they do? Wickedness. The same thing what we are able to look in our pulpits today. When Lord God is not their rock, when Lord God is not their fortress, what happens? They look for lies. They look for such folly things to be great joy. Today you can find much of the present Christendom followed by the so-called pastors in our pulpits who are enjoying such folly standards. Making up weekly ones to the church. Calling them to partake in Lord's table monthly once or, or, or twice in a month. But not every day. No one does that every day. Don't worry, dear brethren, what you sow that you will reap. Our duty is not to have a prejudiced mind and tell to you all to do such and such things, what we look and what we absorb. From the word of Lord God, when it pricks our heart, what the word of Lord God says, and what you people are practicing, that's what we are crying out by breaking up our alliance, as Ezekiel 21 6 emphasizes, as a son of man, emphasizing the standards, what he would say, teachings of the word of Lord God, saying, The sword which has come out from the Lord of God's scabbard, it shall not return back unto him void, it will perform its work, and then it goes back. The same thing is said. Tie up, grid up your lions by breaking up your lions. Tell them the truth where they have lost out. That's what you're trying to do. We have nothing to do with your personals. We have nothing to do with your stupid stupidity way of life, which you think it's great and you're practicing every day, not coming to the church, but rather coming weekly once to the church and thinking that church is good. You don't understand that churches have become waste places. But there is no proper emphasis of the word of Lord God every day to be taught. Lord God the Father calls them the same thing what he used in Haggai chapter 1, the waste places. But there is no proper word of God, it's a dry place. If it is a word of Lord God, it will be a wet place. <laughs> in Exodus chapter 1, in verse number 22, when you can look upon that word, <laughs> the word should be bath. In verse number 21, Lord God built them houses, bath, not 
Masaf, what we can find for families. The translations might have gone for Masaf saying that Lord God build the families. No, Lord God build the house. If you fear Lord God build the house, then Lord God the Father made your body now to be the temple of the living Lord of a God. Then how much more we have to be occupying our soul and spirit for the word of Lord God. You don't learn that. You don't look that. Because you don't get that after if you're not able to dig it and take in the original Hebrew. So he says in the very next verse, the boys are born, pour them, put them in the river water, let them be killed in that river Nile. <laughs> Just imagine if that river water, representing salvation of my Christ, representing the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, representing the word of Lord God, what a great chance it would be for any man on the face of the earth to really realize and enjoy in that word of Lord God and come up to be the Lord light luminaries in this earth and present Christ Lord God the Father and make the world to understand that we have been really the members of truth. You know what Satan is trying? It thinks that it can destroy you by putting you in the water. But Lord God has a plan for saving you. That's what we look in the very next chapter of Moses for three months. He was a man which has been very beautiful. From where he's been taken out now. Drawn out from the water. That's the name of Moses. A man coming out from the water. What does he give now? He gives the entire Torah for the people of Israelites. The same thing what we read when he says in Exodus 33, Yehovah, Yehovah El, he goes to give the attributes, Yehovah, he goes on to say the first one, Kesed Emet, nothing but mercy and truth, Yehovah El, Arak Habhi, Rab Kesed Emet, is a marvelous joy of glory of all the truth. Because Yehovah is Rakum Shen, compassion and gracious. You know, this is the man who writes these things. The word Yehovah El over there referring back to Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with the strong code number 410. But from where, from where he has come, he has drawn me out of the water. Today also, if you have been taken out from the water, called to be the word of Lord God, folly shall never be for you happiness. Your soul will not compromise or digest as a pastor teacher. You would say every day I have to teach the word of Lord God, no matter how the chips may fall, whether they hear a phobia, whether the committee agrees to it or not, whether the world will come back to that Christendom style of thinking or not. We are answerable to Lord God the Father. So what do you do? You don't have your super abundance of happiness in your falliness or in your foolishness by staying far away from discipleship program to the law. You will never have that happiness in you. You would simply state and you would tell to the world, come back and follow the truth. The superabundance of happiness comes to you only when you overcome your pressures and take up your cross and come back and learn the word of Lord God. That's what Satan does in your psychosomatic illness. The solution for your psychosomatic illness is the proper word of Lord God because Satan want to look upon the thinking process that is happening in your soul so you cannot grow up in your soul. You renovate your thinking process cannot happen. Romans 12, 1, 2 and 3. So what does it do? It says don't go for discipleship program. You will never grow up into grammatical program. Program. So that when it happens, Satan reigns. So it's not the body to be reigned by Satan, but by the pure word of Lord God, says the Bible. That's what you have been called. So what you have to do now? Your true abundance of happiness comes only when you take in the word of Lord God accurately every day. That's what it happens, dear brethren. Take in the word of Lord God accurately every day. Your super abundance of happiness happens when you become disciple to the Lord. Now come back over here in Proverbs chapter 15. You can understand over here when he says, Folly is joy to him that is destitute of what? Wisdom. The people who will be destitute, the word called to be kasir, that meant to say they lack wisdom. And anyone lacketh wisdom, the word of Lord God said, even in James, comparing the same things in the book of Proverbs, ask God, he shall give you freely, graciously, provided you are not a double-minded person. 
because the fear of the Lord God is the beginning of the wisdom. So he said, you're lacking, look upon by first building up a wall of fortification. Look upon what is the pressure that is happening in your head, not to do the will of Lord God the Father. So he said, look upon that first, understand that first. Any pressure upon you, he would say, simply get out of that. Because if you're not able to understand that you are destitute of kakma, and the meaning of the word over here for kakma is called as not as wisdom, but the word over here is called to be as a heart, a lab. The man who is destitute of wisdom is not destitute of wisdom, but is called to be destitute of heart and understanding. The word should be lab over here. That is, his body is never for discipleship program. He's destitute of heart. He's not having proper understanding of the word of Lord God. Therefore, he rejoices in his folly. But conjunction of contrast, a man, a nosh of understanding, the man who is been of understanding is called to be as a bina, the fifth fold of the spirit. The man who is able to make up his body to reside and cherish and nourish in the vigor and valor of the word of Lord God, he taketh up his cross every day, though Satan taketh up to and fro to walk against you. Now he taketh up his cross every day as a disciple. He grows up into grammatias and how does he walk? The word calls uprightly, the same thing of Jeremiah 18 4 not thought but uprightly he makes up your thought process to be accurately renovated as per the demands of the word of Lord God the problem is you don't have in your body the accurate vigor and valor of Bible doctrine that's the sad thing for us your body doesn't have accurate vigor and valor because why satan has already put upon you in psychosomatic illness and caleb could say come and let's go fight the lord's battle he's meant to save for us the lord power alone reigns forever and forever it's not the food what you eat it's not the things that you make up to be your exercises though body exercises profiteth little but godliness profiteth unto all things and having the restrictions of your food. Because Lord God the Father gave them in the past. He said don't eat bats. Don't eat such and such frogs. Or such and such things which are stated. People are happy to eat them. People are happy to maintain them. People are happy to look upon them. Though the New Testament says. Give thanks and to pray. To avoid the offense towards the consciousness of another believer, he said, don't eat. Better stop eating non-veg. You know, the things what the word of Lord God says, simply follow. Avoid them. And be in the vigor and valor of the power of the word of Lord God. And God the Father knows how to use you effectively for his work. The same thing over here what we look upright nature of Lord God the Father demands that power and today many people are not able to walk in that power of understanding Bina of understanding the fifth fold of the spirit they're not realizing what is that fifth fold of the spirit because in this fifth fold of the spirit you find in your body that great vigor and valor of strength that great vigor and valor of your strength in the fifth fold of the spirit and dear brethren if you can look satan loves to put pressure upon your soul so that in return your vigor and valor has been destroyed christ a lot of god says over here in proverbs 15:21 a man of understanding, the man who has in his body the vigor and valor of Bible doctrine, he said, he walks uprightly, he is not destitute of his heart. He loves Bible doctrine. Because you know why? He doesn't rejoice in folly. People who rejoice in folly are the ones who make their body not to be disciple-oriented to the law. Never to be disciple-oriented to the Lord. Therefore, they love folly, stupid things. But the man of understanding, what does he do now? 
he comes to walk uprightly. What is that walketh? Though Satan walketh up and down to say what we read in Job 1.7, the same halak over here. But here for us, instead of halak, we can find yalak. <coughs> the strong code there for 1980 for Satan walking halak. Here the strong code number for us is 3212, yalak, Y-A-L-A-K. And the meaning of the word yalak is nothing but to become your manner of life. Make up your manner of life, to join as disciple, to grow up into grammatias. Then you will come back to encounter and maintain nothing but uprightness in your entire life. That's what you walk uprightly. Many people fail in that today in our pulpits. Pastors are not upright to the word of Lord God. If not, they should teach every day the word of Lord God. Leviticus 6.13 The fire shall never be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. But they don't do that. How many times we are failures in Christ? Are you walking uprightly? Because you know why you don't walk uprightly? You are not a man of understanding. Your body doesn't have that vigor and valor of Christ. Your body hasn't made Lord God to be a rock as David says in Psalms 18.1. <coughs> Lord God is not your fortress. And you look upon the remaining characters over here, if you can really realize them, you would say there is no pain for me to become a disciple. There will be no pain for me to have a viewpoint of the thinking of Christ. There is no pain that I can get every thought into captivity for Christ. And now when Lord God the Father is your rock and your fortress, he said, he is my deliverer. So when I now open up my mouth, I will be a disciple oriented in my soul. When I open up my mouth, disciple oriented in my soul. And people are not happy for that. They don't want to become Christ to be their soul oriented deliver for discipleship program. They want what? Miracles, healings. Deliverance so that they can say, Lord, you have delivered us from such and such stupid things of this life. So we come to serve you. They're not realizing that they have to be delivered for eternity in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When all things are good, man want to come and serve Christ. And when things are bad, man want to come back and sow Christ. This is what a man's psychology is all about. But he doesn't go to have that fellowship with Lord God the Father every time, in everything giving thanks to Lord God the Father for what Christ the Lord of God has given, because it is His will in Christ Jesus. That time they don't have to come to serve the Lord. When it is a jam position, they want to ask, Lord, deliver me. But Lord God the Father truly delivers those men for having their mouth for discipleship program, for having their soul for discipleship program. They're having only one this thing, only for discipleship program, they're happy. If it's not a discipleship program, dear brethren, they can never be happy to the Lord. Lord God the Father doesn't deliver them who are not coming for discipleship program in the Lord. What's our deliverance? What's our stupid things? What the people can prophesize us and tell about you is purely the power of dynamic powers. Because Christ, O Lord our God, when he has put to halt the temporary spiritual gifts and people are still operating on that, it's not deliverance. It's leading them one step away from learning the truth, facing the truth in the Lord. So that they can take up their cross and come back to learn the word of Lord God. So that they can come back and understand every time or everything which associates with Yashir, upright relationship with the Lord. They're not aware about that. They want what? Deliverance. What manner of deliverance from the present troubles 
of this evil world already Christ the Lord has delivered you when in Galatians 1 4 ex aereo not sale what has delivered from the standards of this present evil world to the will of God the Father has delivered you out there is no way you can still reside in that therefore Revelation 1 5 says he has washed us from the sins of this world how simple and true the word of Lord God abides, how hard and difficult for the ears of men to believe. Because they don't have a circumcised ears in their life. If they would have had circumcised ears, they would have truly understood how Lord God the Father has delivered your soul so that every time you open up your mouth, you should nothing but talk about discipleship program of the Lord. And people are not at all able to look upon that discipleship program in the Lord. They're never happy for that discipleship program. So, dear brethren, he says the fourth one, he is my God. The strong code number 410 referring back to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He says, my Lord God, the Father is my rock, he has delivered me. He is my fortress, there is none that can steal me out from the salvation of the Lord God. And then he says, he is my strength. The word strength over here, dear brother, is called to be Tusar. What is the meaning of the word Tusar? Any pressure that could be upon your head, he says, it is he who shall cleanse it out. Don't go for pills, which will kill you in return. Cast all your burdens upon my Lord, for he careth for you. The word Tusar over here for the fifth category is strength. It meant to say, any pressure that could be upon your head, he's simply going to renovate it. He simply renovates that. And then he said, in whom I will trust. That is, Yehovah Elohim is what? It is his trust. The word trust over here is called to be Kasa. C-H-A-S-A-H. -A -A I will come for his refuge. I will come for his protection. And therefore, Lord, I build up a wall of fortification against any pressure that could come because Lord God is my trust. I believe in his word. The sixth cat here, what he says, trust. My buckler. The meaning of the word buckler here is called to be magain. That meant to say shield. And this buckler cover or defense or anything which is associated is nothing but he goes to still strengthen further the thinking of mind which no man can imagine or have an experience even to think because of Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. If you can look, whatsoever the mind of man can go on to even think or imagine greater than that Lord God the Father will do. That's the meaning bakla. You know what does he do now? He goes to renovate your strength. Therefore, we can find the youth may fail, the egg may perish, but they that wait upon the Lord our God will renew the strength like eagle. This is the word bakla over here because you're going to erect your structure to the high standards of marvelous glory of Christ, the experience of the whirlwind, the experience of the fire, the experience of the things pertaining to what Moses had, 40 days without food and water. That strength you're going to reach. The strength of glorious believing activities in the Lord. That's the word magain. He says over here, he is my trust, he is my buckler. You know, what does he say? He is my horn. And the meaning of the word horn over here, dear brother, it has been called as keren, Q-E-R-E-N, keren. And the meaning of the word keren is from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun. The head has been renovated as per the vigor and valor of Bible doctrine. Therefore, he is my Karen. When you, when you blow the horn or the trumpet, people will tremble because that will be the Karen sound. Such a great sound you will have as Karen. Therefore, he said, he is my rock. He is my fortress. He is my deliverer. He is my God. 410 for Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is my strength in whom he said now I will trust. Besides anything, Lord God the Father will build up a wall of fortification so that there is nothing that can fight against me or any pressure that could come against me. He is my buckler. Therefore, it is going to be now again. He says he is my horn. The eighth character. From the rising of the sun till the going of the sun. 
shine like the rays of light. That's what your great thinking will be. Is your horn. And then he said, he is my salvation. The word meant to say, he is my absolute yesha, deliverer. The word called to be as shepherd. Because now my thought process is pure, nothing but the viewpoint of Bible doctrine. And when you have this, he said, Lord God the Father will be called as Sageb. <laughs> you know the word Sageb over here, it calls to be a great place of protection, a great place of defense. In simple words, a place of inaccessibly high for Satan even to touch you. No matter whatever it is, he builds such a wall of fortification. Any pressure that could come, it can never stop to renovate your thinking. The same thing what we read long back in the book of Psalms, in chapter number 90, it has to be. They that set their heart upon him, love upon him, he's going to be that Sageb, a tower. The same thing over here, Sageb. Inaccessibly high position where Satan cannot even touch you. There can be no pressure to put upon your soul. There can be no pressure to put upon your vigor and valor of physical strength as well. You're going to erect such a structure in the Lord God that your body demands and looks upon only that truth. The ten attributes over the false characters of Satan which tries to put you into psychosomatic illness. Now coming back over to Psalms chapter 91, we in verse number 2, we look upon the attributes what Moses describes about my Lord in verse number 2. He said, I say to the Lord, he is my refuge. The same thing what we look, the sixth character what over here, David says in chapter number 18 in verse number 2, the word makesh, that meant to say what? Building up a wall of fortification against any pressure so what he will be the next one he said he will be my fortress the word fortress is any pressure that could come upon you so that you are going to make up every thought into captivity for Christ the word called as Matsod and then he says what my God the word 430 referring back to Yahweh Elohim God the Father and God the Son and Lord God the Holy Spirit the Holy Trinity he refers over here 430 and then what does he say I will trust the word over here, but tack, I put all the things of my life in my body, in my soul, in the wall of fortification which you want me to. I will build up such a security in the Lord God that I will completely trust in him. He is my batak. These are the four things what David, what Moses describes about my Lord. If you people can understand about these attributes mentioned by David and Moses about my Yehovah Elohim, then the fiery trials or the wiles of Satan are nothing. And the only one prayer for it will be faithfulness, stability in every season to learn the word of Lord God as a great treasure of fear of Lord God. Wisdom and knowledge of the Lord God, that should be the only treasure for you. That should be the only treasure for you. So, dear brethren, the things pertaining to Lord God, what we find over here, the only treasure for us is the faithfulness to prove first. Not many mighty are called. The weak and humble of this world who are faithful to the Lord's mind, they are called. Not many mighty are called. The lacking thing that is lacking in our pulpits is faithful pastor teachers. Therefore, we can read in Jeremiah 3.15, I will send shepherds after my own heart who shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding and who they will be, faithful pastor teachers. They don't power the word of Lord God as we look in Galatians 1, 7. But what did they do? They make up your mouth to open up as grammatist program. The people who are grown up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine by daily teaching the word of Lord God. Such a caliber of the people they will come. Such a caliber of the people they will be. Today what is happening in our pulpits? 
No word of Lord God for us at all. No word of Lord God at all. So what's happening, dear brethren? They're not coming to give the children to the water so that Moses could be drawn out, so that they could be daily teaching of the word of Lord God for them. They're not coming to such a life in the Lord. Satan knows very well when you don't have that life, put pressure upon you. Put pressure upon your soul. Put pressure to destroy your aleph energy or vigor and valor energy. Therefore, what you enjoy, you enjoy the folly. Far away from discipleship program, you make it to be simca, super abundance of happiness, but you're void of understanding. You're void of having a heart. You're destitute of having a heart. But the man of understanding who has that, he says, he walketh uprightly. He knows to every day come back and take up the cross. He knows every day to come back and look and learn the word of Lord God. He knows every day to realize when he walketh uprightly to build up a wall of fortification in the Lord God. He knows that very well every day to be done. And Satan thinketh it can cheat you. <laughs> but you don't understand the attributes mentioned by David in Psalms 18.2 and Moses in Psalms 91 verse number 2 that you can become a place of inaccessibly high where Satan cannot even imagine even to think about you. Far less it can come and touch you. Therefore the power given for us in Romans 16 he said you can trample down Satan under your feet. What a great other energy you are going to enjoy when you serve Christ in the spirit of truth. A youth may not give you that pleasure. The Aleph energy being renovated to show Christ. Like the way how Abraham could be after his circumcision. When the first wife Sarah has been dead, he gets married to Keturah. And he has another five more children. Faithful ones of the Lord God have that strength and vigor of the Lord God. Therefore, youth may fail, ang may vanish, but they that wait upon the Lord God will flourish. Because they fear the Lord God. And that's the vigor and valor of your strength as well in the church age for you to be abiding faithful to Christ. And dear brethren, <laughs> The present Christendom is not able to be faithful because they love to have their happiness in folly, stupid things. And Satan is very, very successful. The enemy for you is your own negative volition to learn the word of God. When you have your negative volition, that will be the greatest enemy for you in this life. You may not understand about this enemy, but you will realize. When you say no to the word of Lord God, Satan has a game to destroy you. Because when you say yes to the word of Lord God, you will know the truth. And that truth alone will set you free. And if you say no to that truth, Satan knows you're saying no to your manual work. The Lord God the Father has made you in his design and what are you, what it is not. You have been there given in the Bible. So you're saying no to your manual book. So you can't understand how to operate. So you doesn't know what is your power. He doesn't know what is your limits. And Satan comes to enjoy in your viewpoint of your human standards. And therefore it puts pressure, pressure, pressure. Say no to Bible doctrine. And what do you want to do? Live a life of lies, of vanity. That's what the world is today, living a life of vanity to the highest. And then, dear brethren, every time Christ, O Lord of God, comes up to give us this grace to understand his mind, 
every time he comes to give up his grace. You know how much of great love he, holds, he, he, he bestows upon us. Only if you could ask faithfulness, stability in your times. In every season, if you have been faithful to the Lord God, a rainy season, summer season, any season, be faithful to come back and learn the word of Lord God every day for a span of one year like disciples to Christ. How greatly would I have given you the title of Christians because you cannot depart from that path of knowing the word of God every day. When you taste and see my Lord God is good, you will not taste anything else on this earth. All taste of the world will be absolutely sin. Come back and take up your time for the Lord. Redeem from the present evil world. Already has done that. What for? To make you to walk in the will of Lord God the Father. The will over there is Telema will. That which the rats on approval of Lord God, the chapat's desire of Lord God to be fulfilled through our lives. And yet, dear brethren, how many days more you still don't want to come back and look and face? The attributes of my Lord understand his power and still try to live a life that which is absolutely vanity. The great verse for us in Psalms 18:2 being recorded and penned by Lord God, the Holy Spirit never to pass to understand his mind. And how much more we still lack applying the truth being taught and still get defeated in the hands of Satan in your soul and get weakness in your body for the pressures of this world rather than overcome the pressures of this world by having a desire and a heart to know and learn the Lord's mind every day. As you eagerly wait for your boyfriend to be met or girlfriend to be met, if you have that eagerness to learn the word of Lord God every day, to take the kisses of my Christ, your Song of Songs chapter 1, your lives would have been absolutely blessed. You have eagerness to know your sins and enjoy your time in sins and waste your time in sins. But you're not eager enough to stay faithful to know the word of Lord God. The report will be asked by the Satan. Satan would say, shunting, I could see in their thought process of their soul. That they don't have your fear. If not, they would have joined as disciples and they have grown up into crime and tears to the Lord. The one who is having understanding in his body as discipleship program, he would simply join as disciples to be the manner of life, grow up into Kramatiers to be the course of life. And he would have erected the structures which is upright relationship with the Lord God rather than living in a relationship of sin and lies. Upright till the sin till the vessel could be upright. It's not to but Yashir says Jeremiah 18.4 till the vessel could be upright. He couldn't live that to compromise in his soul. But the only thing what we can look and understand is that be upright. Erect your structure for uprightness in the Lord. Folly has great happiness being destitute of his heart but the men of understanding will walk uprightly in the power of knowing the attributes of the Lord in his strength rather than fearing Satan and have your psychosomatic illness to reign in you. Your body is now called to be the temple of the living Lord God of Holy Ghost. Satan cannot even touch you, far less you can make the thinking of Satan to reign in you, being polluted in your mind by not knowing the truth. So dear brethren, know the truth. And that truth alone will set you free, and nothing else than that on the face of the earth. Know the truth. And asking you all to come and learn the truth is the right work of the pastor teacher to teach rather than perverting the true gospel of my Lord, the true establishment of the power of the teachings of the Lord. 
in making you all to understand Matthew 13, 52, to join as disciples to drop into Kramatias and in return going and making disciples of all the nations. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, led us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head, bowed, and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order of telling to Lord God, the Father, and the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself, you shall have the eternal truth. The eternal truth for us were very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the grace must to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, where with you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the grace must to care so thorn log on. Herald the word in season out of sin, because the Dharma Trumma witnesses where they have been called. The number one Dharma Trumma witnesses in Wellington AT for the Bible in our hands, and number two Dharma Trumma witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature. The entire angelic costly of witnesses and what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go to your brother and you decide. Because when Lord God the Father has described his attributes in Psalms 18.2 and 91.2 of Psalms. 18.2 and 91.2 <laughs> What a great Lord our God we have to serve him without having any fear. And fulfilling the great good pleasure of Lord God the Father should be the ultimate reason of your survival on this earth. Rather than looking upon stupid things to be fulfilled in this flesh. Yeah, brother, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God the Holy Ghost with us. To the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, and very divine, glorious grace. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, be grateful and thankful for the great privilege, O Lord, which you get to learn your mind. As Lord, there are many things which the pastor teachers have absolutely failed in upholding your truth. Many things what the disciples know not, and they become traps for psychosomatic illness. If the pastor teachers being sent by your heart, O Lord, they would come back faithfully and teach the word of Lord God in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic so that the believers can understand the power of the word and not to be easily perverted from your grammatious program which you have called for us by daily carrying your cross and becoming the will of Lord God the Father to be joined as disciples in Christ. What a marvelous grace of joy you have given for us, O Lord, every day to realize that when we become your disciples, what a great power we enjoy over here on this earth to reign with you. Because you are the one, O Lord, that shall reign forever and forever. You are the one, O Lord, you have told that every knee shall bow and confess before your presence. And that great mighty life through us as Psalms 18.2 and 9.2.1 to O Lord. The world would easily tremble and we can tremble on Satan at our feet by making the world to realize Christ, my Lord, my God, my rock is the way, the truth, and the life. Help us, Father, to strengthen and stabilize and establish the things which have given for us so that, Lord, in each and everything, Father, we could come back and serve you in spirit and in truth all the days of this life. Being grateful and thankful for the great privilege of the Lord to understand your mind, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten the challenge and to bless us by this message which thou hast prepared and kept for us on today's date in every past to understand your mind to give you that which is due according to thy will, to be drawn out of the water, and to stand as Jehovah, mine, mine, tikeo, who farsin. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father, the Lord God, the Holy Ghost, and let and challenge and bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, sovereign Lord. Amen. <laughs>